In Saskatchewan and Alberta, hospitals are buckling under the weight of COVID cases. In Alberta, COVID is killing people at more than three times the national rate. In Saskatchewan, hospitalizations and ICU admissions have more than doubled since the beginning of this month. Ottawa says help is available to both provinces. Patty Haidu is the Minister of Health and she is in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Minister Haidu, thanks very much for coming on to the program. And, and as we speak, uh, well over half of the active COVID cases in this country are in just two provinces. Why do you think Saskatchewan and Alberta are as bad as they are right now? Well, uh, well, thanks for the question, David. And I think, you know, when you looked at the modeling that was provided by the Public Health Agency of Canada um, many months ago, even with vaccination, um, if measures were released too quickly, too soon, especially if there's pockets of highly unvaccinated individuals, uh, cases were projected to rise. And that's exactly what we see is we see, uh, you know, in areas where there's lower vaccination rates, a higher rate of virus transmission. And, and certainly I think, um, as I indicated to my letter in particular to Minister Shandro just prior to the election, um, some of the, you know, uh, some of the choices that have been made um, by the provinces have led to uncontrolled transmission, which is really, unfortunately, putting the provinces, the healthcare system, and certainly um, Canadians in, in sort of a very fragile place. You have also, through the federal government, offered uh, those two provinces help, federal help. Alberta has accepted that, taking uh, help from the Canadian Armed Forces. Uh, particularly the capacity to be able to move people, patients around the province and out of province as necessary. Saskatchewan at this point says it doesn't need any federal aid beyond what already exists. Do you see space for the federal government to be of additional help to Saskatchewan in this case? Well, we, I spoke with Minister Merriman at the end of last week just to reiterate the offer from the federal government to help. And listen, the kinds of things that are easy to move around are things that we have a high degree of, uh, you know, high amount of. So we've got, for example, tons of PPE. We've got lots of therapeutics. We have a lot of testing capacity and backup, uh, you know, equipment. All of those kinds of things can be easily and quickly shared with provinces and territories if they need it. The real crunch, though, is people, health, human resources. So ICU nurses, respiratory technologists, all of those kinds of folks that, uh, quite frankly, are in hot demand everywhere across the country, indeed around the world. So I really stress to Minister Merriman that, um, to the best of their ability, using the modeling that they undoubtedly have, uh, that some advanced planning would be very helpful because we want to make sure that when that request comes in, if they need uh, additional supports, people, uh, human resources, that we can quickly put those teams together and, and support Saskatchewan. Part of that, of course, comes down to just as you say, people. Um, Alberta has asked for, and I understand received help of eight critical care nurses from the Canadian Armed Forces. Do you know when they would be in place? I don't have those specific details, but I do know once we understand what the needs are, we can quickly move people around, whether it's through the Canadian military, whether it's through the contracts that we have with the mm -hmm. Canadian Red Cross, we can actually facilitate those individuals to get into place fairly quickly. So I don't have the specific details of those individuals, but I can say that advanced planning is very critical because of course, you know, we're in a fragile state. We do see that some provinces and territories that are in, in fact smaller starting to see some growth in cases. We want to make sure that as we head into the fall and winter, where we know that people will be moving indoors and there'll be a higher risk of, of uh, contagion uh, with the virus, that we have a, a fairly good plan of what we'll need and when. And that's why I've really pressed both ministers to think ahead in terms of what they might need based on their own modeling of hospitalization. And when you talk about some of the smaller provinces, certainly New Brunswick is seeing a, a spiking right now um, in terms of the the. COVID cases that it has, but there's always the question about modeling. Ontario is out with modeling today that shows the kinds of things that can be expected if there are not any new restrictions, any changes. Uh, and it does show growth, but uh, we also see that um, there was an offer from the government of Newfoundland and Labrador uh, to Alberta, and Alberta reportedly refused that help or simply said that we, we don't need help at this point in terms of additional healthcare personnel because we expect that the peak, in other words, it will get worse towards the end of October. Now, 
Albertans and the rest of Canada don't actually have a good sense of that in Alberta or Saskatchewan because the, the modeling is not public. But there is federal modeling. Do you have a sense of how bad things are likely to get? Like, are, are, are things going to be considerably worse than they are now, be it Saskatchewan, Alberta, or you name it, province-wise? Well, I think the challenge is that even after case growth subsides, you know, so for example, we start to see less infections amongst people, whether it's because of the implementation of some uh, that proof of vaccination, whether it's because of restriction on, on gathering sizes or, or other kinds of public health measures that for a period of time, hospitalizations continue to climb. You know, it's a, it's a lagging indicator, hospitalizations and ICU admissions. That means um, for, even after cases decline, you're, you know, you can see that there will still be a need for those kinds of resources. Uh, I can't speak to their own internal modeling, but I, I can just say this, I'll repeat it, that we'll be there to support them. The best case scenario though, is that we do try to do some planning and systemic planning in terms of how to move these valuable resources, people around our country who are really helping uh, Canadians from coast to coast to coast with really difficult situations. Yeah, so let me put it to you this way. Uh, many physicians in Alberta are saying that the healthcare system is very much at the verge of collapse, that triage is already happening because people can't get elective surgeries. Things like cancer therapy, because the beds are being used to take care of COVID patients, most of whom are unvaccinated, some of whom are fully vaccinated. Nonetheless, they're occupying that bed. I suppose the question is, where are we headed? And if those provinces aren't releasing modeling and the federal government has modeling, should the federal government be making its modeling as much as possible as, uh, available to those provinces where it is not being shared by the provincial government? So the federal government does have modeling and it is publicly available on the Public Health Agency of Canada uh, website and we'll continue to make sure that there is a transparency of the data and the modeling that we have um, so that Canadians can see for themselves and so that researchers and scientists can use that data in their own work, which I have to, you know, say have been doing a phenomenal job um, for many, many months uh, analyzing all of the data that we provide through the through the website. I'll just say this. Yes, though I, I think it's it, you know I think you've highlighted something that's really, really important, and that is that we know that one of the ways to protect communities is the higher rates of vaccination. So two things have to happen. We have to bring down case numbers and we have to get more people vaccinated so that we can actually see an end to this. I mean, this roller coaster of, you know, coming so close to the line, having health care systems that are besieged, uh, you know, and you point out that not only is it COVID patients that are at risk, but it's many, many other people with critical or chronic illnesses that are at risk we have to we have to do our best together to try and end this this uh this you know crisis that we see arising and so one of the best ways is to try and make sure that as many people as possible are vaccinated that's why i'm urging everyone in saskatchewan alberta if you're not already vaccinated to please make an appointment if not for yourself do it for your children do it for the small businesses your children's school year and of course the many people in your life that are relying on a healthcare system to be there for them when they need it okay let me just briefly ask you I, i'm almost out of time here but i should ask you about the prime minister who offered a billion dollars to the provinces to roll out vaccine passports. Uh, New Brunswick Premier Blair, uh, Blaine Higgs says he hasn't got the money yet. Um, when can he expect it? When can all the provinces expect money? Well, listen, the Prime Minister is good on his offers, and we have shipped billions and billions of dollars to the provinces and territories, not just through the Safe Restart money, but through the Safe Schools initiative. But on the vaccine uh, passport specifically, when can they expect that money? Well, I would imagine that those um, that work is happening right now. Listen, I, I can't speak to the exact date, but what I can say, and I guess what I'm trying to say is that Premier Hicks can know that the Prime Minister is good on this offer. I mean, he has not let down the provinces and territories yet. Every commitment that we've made to them for additional financial resources has been met. So Premier Hicks should know that this is a, a firm commitment from the Prime Minister. Minister Haidu, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.